because in 85, he's a young man, right? And so, of course, now when we meet him, he's the president of one of the most powerful countries on Earth. He was still very warm, genuine. Like when he first saw my parents, you could see the, the twinkle in his eye. I, I moved here in 2013. I mean, if you think about what, if, where is the most exciting place on Earth to live right now? I mean, it has to be China. Absolutely. You know, made a better life for its people has been really impressive. And then my children I never thought would grow up in China because of the hospitality and the, the welcoming friendship that my mom and dad showed to strangers. In 2012, the phone rings. It's my mom and she says, do you remember the Chinese people that stayed with us in 1985? And I was like, no, not really. And she's like, neither do I, but you know what? One of them is gonna be the president. And so of course, you know, cause this is 30 years later and you have to clear out the, your mind. And then they took out their old albums. They started remembering everything from that visit. And, you know, of course, then the, the, you know, they have all these memories. In 1985, Xi Jinping, who was party secretary of Zhengding County in Hebei at the time, led an agricultural delegation to Iowa to visit farms and food processing plants. On this, his first visit to the U.S., Xi Jinping spent two nights at the home of the Dvorak family. That's um, when he came in 1985 and stayed in my house, and my mom and dad and sister were there, and obviously that's Xi Jinping. So I was 21. My brother and I were both in university, so we had the empty rooms. Then my mother was able to say, yes, of course, you know, we'll, we'll host uh, the group. And so we had Xi Jinping and the translator for the group. They came on a, a delegation to learn about agriculture, but it broadened to asking a lot of questions and learning a lot about American life. So the, their number one thing that they remember is that he was inquisitive, curious, wanted to know, wanted to ask a lot of questions, learn as much as he could while he was there. It was a, like a huge cultural learning. On February 15, 2012, Xi Jinping, as China's vice president, was visiting the U.S. again. He made a point of traveling to Iowa to see some old friends. Mr. and Mrs. Dvorak had moved to Florida some years earlier. They made a special journey to be reunited with their Chinese guest from 27 years before. <笑>我记得就在你们儿子的卧室里我记得你们还有一个开的女儿他问了我很多好奇的问题比如你们有没有看过美国电影当我说我看过这个梅里尔斯特里普演的猎鹿人以及教父以后呢他感到非常诧异
Uh, and we had, um, you know, we were there about two and a half hours. I was asking about, you know, the president, how his life had developed, asking questions like how he met the first lady, uh, you know, things like that. So it was very much, just very much an, a warm gathering of um, kind of a reunion after so many years. So we, we see him not just as a leader making a speech on TV, but as like a real human being. During the, um, when we had the dinner with him, one of the questions we asked was, um, what did he want to accomplish during his, his, during his time as the president? And what did he want his legacy to be? And he made the really good point that, you know, he knows what he's doing is important, but at the same time, he understands the threat of history and that, you know, in a country that's been here for 5,000 years, he's gonna, he, he's gonna play one little step to improve China in a long role of improvement, improvement, improvement. And, and so, you know, he was very modest in the sense of he's a patriot. I mean, he loves China. He loves his country. He devoted his whole life to this country. And as a leader, he cares very much about what happens. And the fact that during his presidency, China hit this point where they can say, you know, there's nobody living below the poverty line. It's a huge, um, it's a huge accomplishment, something that he should be very proud of. On September 17, 2015, the Dvorak's old home was opened as the Sino-American Friendship House. I think it's, I think it's great because it really, you know, the house, so uh, it's now called the um, Sino-American Friendship House. Uh, it can be a very positive, uh, and a very positive and symbolic way for people in America to really learn more about China and learn in a positive way and to really have a, a way to know so many of the good things that China has done for the world and so much of what Xi Jinping has done that has been good for China and good for the world. So